Hey everybody, Dr. Hagmar here, and perhaps you're struggling with thyroid problems. Maybe you've taken thyroid hormones uh, for several months or several weeks or even several years, and no matter what you do, you're still feeling tired and run down. You're fatigued constantly. You're experiencing an increase in depression and brain fog and anxiety. And no matter what you do, no matter what medication is, is swapped out or no matter how your medication is increased or decreased, you're still gaining weight, you're still, still losing hair, and you're still experiencing all these terrible, terrible symptoms. These symptoms are really the most common things that we see when people first start coming and working with us. And if this is you, I want to talk to you about a common reason why some of this is happening. Uh, and especially holds true for those of you who have been under some chronic stress or there was a major stressor or an event that you've encountered in your lifetime. Now, regardless of what may have uh, been told about this, chronic stress really has disastrous effects on your brain and it really has disastrous effects on your body. Now, this stress can be physical, it can be emotional, and of course, it can be chemical as well. You know, stress really turns on that fight or flight response. And this is that inner turmoil, that inner tension that if the body doesn't adapt to, uh, has the ability to raise your cortisol levels. And that's really what we're going to be talking about today, the relationship between cortisol levels and thyroid. You see, high cortisol levels can raise something called reverse T3. And this is a major problem for many people with thyroid disease. And this is also why it's so important to have your reverse T3 levels tested. You see, cortisol is a hormone, and it's very important to thyroid function. You know, too much of it and it can block the conversion of T4 into T3, causing low T3, and all of the symptoms that I'm sure you're familiar with if you have hypothyroidism. Too little cortisol, on the other hand, and thyroid and estrogen receptors don't become sensitized. They become less responsive, okay? When thyroid receptors can't take up thyroid hormones into the cell because, let's say, the receptor uh, becomes dulled and it becomes downregulated, you end up with many of these hypothyroid symptoms like we just mentioned. Right? Now, you re may remember from past videos that we did, we talked about the thyroid making two hormones. We talked about it making T4 and we talked about it making T3. And if you make too much or too little um, cortisol, your body can't convert that T4 into T3. And this is a common reason for many women to complain of feeling tired and feeling brain fog and feeling cold all the time and experiencing weight gain but their doctor insists because that TSH and that T4 is normal that there's nothing wrong, all right? So what gives? Well, like we already related to the thyroid, there's more going on here. There's more to this picture. There's more that needs to be understood, right? This cortisol that I just mentioned, this is a hormone made by your adrenal glands and when your body is stressed out, Again, that physical, that chemical, that emotional, your sympathetic nerve system kicks in, right? And when the sympathetic nerve system kicks in, those adrenal glands get that signal and they pump out lots and lots of cortisol. And like I said earlier, this cortisol does two things, right? In the right amount, it sensitizes your thyroid, uh, thyroid receptors and, and everything is good. But when you have too much or too little, this is where the problem really lies. Now, I'm sure you've heard of diabetes, right? We have type 1 diabetes, and, and these are people that fail to produce insulin. Um, but then there's also type 2 diabetics, and these are people who produce insulin, but the cells are not responding to insulin. And this is what we call insulin resistance, right? Now, in people who are under chronic stress, your problem may not be that your thyroid is not capable of producing thyroid hormone. It may be an issue with thyroid hormone not getting into the cells where it's needed. Right? Um, it could be a problem with the receptors. Right? Now, if you continue to struggle with thyroid symptoms, right? the brain fog, like I just mentioned, the depression, the anxiety, the weight gain, the sleeping problems, the hair loss, um, it may be time to work with a doctor who will look into the bigger picture of things and who can relate to looking at the connections between, uh, let's say, the thyroid and the adrenals right? and uncover really why your thyroid is malfunctioning. Now, the adrenals are really only one cause of why the thyroid doesn't work right. There's many, many other causes. We've talked about this in lots of other videos. Okay? Now, back to the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands, again, may be one of those key pieces to your thyroid picture. So that's going to wrap up today's video. In closing, there are a couple points that I want you to remember about thyroid and adrenals. Okay? Number one is if you continue to struggle with thyroid problems, despite taking thyroid medication, something is missing. And something missing, again, might be those high cortisol levels or if you've been experiencing um, stress for a prolonged period of time, um, like anything else, what goes up comes down and those cortisol levels may be very, very low. 
that's a problem as well. So get those cortisol levels checked. Number two, um, it's also important to have your DHEA levels tested. So you want to um, have your cortisol levels and you want to have your DHEA levels both tested, right? Now, I prefer to test these things through saliva. Uh, very often, blood work will often miss these subtle deficiencies that can only be picked up in saliva, all right? So I'll leave a link um, in today's video to learn more about the kind of testing that we use in, in our office um, and, and why we use it. Um, number three is remember that your thyroid makes T3 and T4, and measuring the T3, the free T3, and especially the reverse T3 levels, this is very, very important. But if it's found that the thyroid levels are not in their optimal range, then I want you to realize that you need to continue digging. There's much more to this. You have to uncover, again, what is the root cause of why those levels are low, right? Is it inflammation? Is it blood sugar? Is it virus? Is it some kind of infection? Is it leaky gut, et cetera, right? This investigation does not end if it turns out that you have an elevated reverse T3 or a low T3, right? You just unraveled one layer. It's time to keep digging and investigating until you have answered that question, why is it low, right? That's one of the biggest problems I see too, is there's so much talk about low T3, low T3, low T3, and there's so many doctors out there who are pushing uh, T3 replacement. And I want you to understand, if you're watching this video, if you come across doctors like that, that simply giving T3 when low T3 levels are low does not address why those T3 levels are low. Further investigation needs to be done into why those T3 levels are low. And I'm going to add this, is that if you are a person with Hashimoto's disease, I do not recommend T3, all right? But again, that'll be something you need to have a conversation with your doctor. Again, I'm not your doctor at this point. So it is something you need to discuss with your doctor, but I don't ever recommend T3 replacement when a person has Hashimoto's. There's just too much to gamble at that point. So I hope you liked today's video. I hope it gives you one more thing to discuss with your doctor when it comes to poor thyroid function. Of course, if you liked today's video, be sure to comment below. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you check out our website for lots of information, more information about natural thyroid treatment options. All right? So until next time, take care.